this video we will continue our chapter organic chemistry some basic principle and techniques so far in our earlier videos we have completed these nine topics and today we are going to take up our 10th topic quantitative analysis of organic compounds so first of all what is quantitative analysis okay so in our earlier video we did qualitative analysis in qualitative analysis we found out which of the elements are present in the organic compound so now in this video we will do quantitative analysis that is we will estimate in how much quantity the elements which are present in the organic compound are there and using that quantity we will try to find out the molecular formula of the organic compound okay and by that we will ascertain which organic compound was present in the sample provided to us we'll do estimation of carbon hydrogen nitrogen sulfur halogen and phosphorus and oxygen in our video so first of all let's take up carbon and hydrogen okay you can refer back to the qualitative analysis video how we a certain which of the elements were present in our compound okay so you can go back and check so first of all we'll take a known mass it is very important that you weight the sample because after that only we'll be able to figure out which compound was present in our sample okay so we'll take the known mass and we are going to burn it in presence of excess of oxygen and we'll use a copper oxide as a catalyst okay so whatever the carbon and hydrogen was present in the compound that will be oxidized okay so carbon will be oxidized to carbon dioxide and water will be oh, sorry and hydrogen will be oxidized to water okay so we are going to measure how much carbon dioxide we got and how much water we have obtained okay using that and then using this formula okay with the help of the mole concept we can figure out these values x and y once we get these values then we'll be able to tell which hydrocarbon was present in the sample okay so we are going to heat our sample okay so carbon dioxide and water will be formed okay so whatever the amount of water is produced okay it will be absorbed in anhydrous calcium carbonate okay so we are going to measure how much of water is absorbed first measure the well amount of anhydrous calcium carbonate tube and when water is absorbed again measure the weight of this tube the difference of that too will be because of presence of absorbed water so that will be the quantity of water so we got how much water was produced okay next in the next tube of concentrated solution of potassium hydroxide okay koh so potassium hydroxide it absorbs carbon dioxide so whatever the carbon dioxide was produced that will be absorbed in this tube then again we will do the same thing measure the weight of this tube before and after the experiment the difference between two will give us the amount of carbon dioxide so we got the amount of water we got the amount of carbon dioxide okay then we can simply convert those into moles then we can find out the value of x okay and similarly we can get the value of y and using these two values we can get the formula of the hydrocarbon given in our sample and thus we can find out which element was there okay clear next let's estimate nitrogen so there are two method for its estimation first is dumans method and second is zedal's method okay let's take up the 
Dumas method. What we are going to do is we'll take up a organic compound which is having nitrogen. Okay. Then we are going to heat it with the presence of carbon, sorry, with the presence of copper oxide and in an atmosphere of carbon dioxide. So it is going to yield free nitrogen plus carbon dioxide and water. Okay. So we can estimate these as we have done earlier. Okay. So here we are going to just estimate the nitrogen. So we are going to pass it through the concentrated potassium hydroxide solution so that carbon dioxide is absorbed here. Okay. Water will be also absorbed in this solution and what is left with us will be only nitrogen. Okay. Why we are using the atmosphere of carbon dioxide. Okay. So that there is no oxygen because if oxygen will be left, then we will not get just free nitrogen here. It will be nitrogen as well as oxygen. That's why we are using carbon dioxide atmosphere for heating it. Okay. So whatever the nitrogen gas will be there, then it will have some volume. We can measure the pressure and using the ideal gas equation. Okay. Or you can use other formulas okay of a gas state and then we can find out how much quantity that is in terms of volume and then using the standard condition we can find out how much moles of nitrogen was there okay by that we will get this value z we already obtained this x and y value using earlier method we got z so we will get which compound was present in our sample okay we'll do numerical problem related to dumans method in our next video next is jadal's method in jadal's method we'll take up the again the sample which is containing the nitrogen and now we are going to heat it with concentrated sulfuric acid h2so4 okay so we will take up the sample in the Zedal's flask then we will add concentrated sulfuric acid and copper sulfate to it okay we are going to heat it and then we will do some other titration and finally we will ascertain how much nitrogen was there okay so first of all nitrogen present in the compound will be converted into ammonium sulfate okay so we took the organic compound and we heated with concentrated sulfuric acid then we will get ammonium sulfate okay then we'll add excess of sodium hydroxide to this mixture so ammonia gas will be liberated then the liberated ammonium gas will be absorbed in excess of standard solution of sulfuric acid okay so finally ammonium sulfate will be there okay and since we have used excess of sulfuric acid so when this reaction will be completed then some of the standard solution of sulfuric acid will be left unreacted okay then we are going to do a titration with standard alkali solution after that we will find out how much of sulfuric acid was left by that we can find out how much of ammonia reacted and using these we can get how much of nitrogen was present in the organic compound okay but there is a drawback with this method right this method will be not applicable to organic compound like nitrogen and azo compounds okay or with compounds having nitrogen present in the ring like pyridine okay so these compound though they are having nitrogen but they will not react with concentrated h2so4 to form ammonium sulfate and all our further titration was dependent on this 
ammonium sulfate okay so jadal's method will not be applicable when nitro compound is there or azo compound is there or any compound having nitrogen in the ring is there okay next is estimation of halogen so we are going to do it with a method known as carrier's method okay so first we'll take up a known mass of organic compound and we are going to heat it in presence of fuming nitric acid hno3 then we will add this silver nitrate okay and after that what is going to happen is carbon and hydrogen present in the compound will be oxidized to carbon dioxide and water and the halogen present in the compound will give you silver halide either silver chloride silver bromide or silver iodide as we did in our qualitative analysis okay then it will be filtered washed dried and weighted on weighing silver halide we can find out how much of halide was there and by that we can find out how much of chloride bromide or iodide was present in our organic compound and thus we can find out the formula of the organic compound as we did earlier next estimation of sulfur okay so again we are going to take up a known mass of organic compound and we are going to heat it in the same carrier's tube in presence of any oxidizing agent either we can take sodium peroxide na2o2 or we are going to take fuming nitric acid they both are oxidizing agents so whatever the sulfur is present in the compound will be oxidized to sulfuric acid h2so4 okay then this sulfuric acid could be precipitated by adding excess of barium chloride okay so it will be precipitated as barium sulfate baso4 barium chloride formula is ba cl2 okay then we will filter wash dry and weight this precipitate by that we can calculate the percentage of sulfate or we can calculate the percentage of sulfur okay then we can find out the formula of the compound in our sample next phosphorus so we will again take up a known mass of organic compound and we are going to heat it with fuming nitric acid okay whatever the phosphorus was present in the compound that will be oxidized to phosphoric acid okay then we will add ammonia and ammonium molybdate to it so that we can get a precipitate of ammonium phospho molybdate okay then we are going to again repeat the same procedure wash it filter it dry it and then weight the compound okay and then we can get how much of phosphorus was present okay and by that we can get how much of phosphorus that in terms of percentage or in formula okay so how much of phosphorus was there in the sample then we can get the formula of the sample and we can ascertain which organic compound was there okay next for oxygen we'll again take up a definite mass of organic compound and it will be decomposed by heating in a stream of nitrogen gas so we'll take the organic compound then we will heat it in a stream of nitrogen gas then the mixture of gaseous product containing the oxygen will be passed over red hot coke so whatever the oxygen was there so coke has a very good affinity for oxygen okay so all the oxygen will be converted into carbon monoxide okay then we will take this mixture and pass it through wall iodine pentoxide where the carbon monoxide is oxidized to carbon dioxide producing iodine okay then we'll use this the balance equations and the mole concept and then we will 
find out how much carbon dioxide and how much iodine was present and we will backtrace to how much oxygen was there and then we can get the percentage of oxygen present in the organic compound. So what we did today is like we saw different techniques how we will estimate how much carbon, how much hydrogen, how much nitrogen, how much sulfur, how much halogen, how much phosphorus or how much oxygen was there in our organic compound. Okay. We estimated the weight of the compound by which we got how much of our weight of the these elements were present in the sample. Okay. And comparing these two, we can get what percentage these compound were present. Okay. So we can also get the percentage. We can also get the formula. So we have done with the theory part in our next lecture. I will sh show you some of the numerical problem related to the estimation. Okay. How we are going to solve the numerical problems. Okay. Thank you.